Hello everyone, this is a video about Python developer jobs in the UK, September 2022. And I've already come to this site, read.co.uk, and the search is Python developer, and I've selected work from home. So I can't promise all of these are going to be relevant, we're dependent upon the search engine, so hang in there. First one is going to be database engineer. So already not no Python in the title, but presumably it mentions Python somewhere in the description. Database engineer, remote, up to 45K, excellent benefits and up to 20% bonus. That's quite rare. I currently require an experience, duh. Database engineer to design, develop and deliver data and database solutions. A suitable candidate will enjoy the technical side of databases. Well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? Otherwise, going to be a bit grumpy, aren't they? Data engine, so 35 to 45, that's not great considering the current financial climate and the cost of things. Data engineer remotes as contract, full-time, work from home, London, 500 to 600 pounds a day. GCP, so let's just keep a watch on what are the cloud platforms mentioned. Okay, pipelines, AWS, Azure, so yeah, all things cloud, mid-level cloud engineer to support a client for a period of six months. Okay, so this video is going to be mainly looking at permanent full-time work from home jobs. Uh, 55,000 to 60,000 per annum. Uh, with a prestigious construction, so it should be an S there, construction. Retail company to assist the recruitment of a senior software developer. This position is remote and will be well suited to a software developer with excellent technical capability or the usual jargon. Um, let's have a look at that. Agile, Scrum, SDLC, Computer Science. Hmm, proficiency with three or more of the following languages. So expert in two, okay. Python, SQL, JavaScript, HTML, Ruby, Java. We are open to accepting CVs from candidates with backgrounds such as software developer, senior software developer, C++ developer, application developer. Um, on the subject of languages, I just wanted to, I'll come back to this and we'll come back to the jobs in a second, but I just wanted to look at this. Um, I'll just make that slightly bigger. There we go. Um, uh, it's uh, maybe easier to see like this. So um, this is a Stack Overflow survey. So JavaScript's by far the most popular language in the survey response on Stack Overflow. But you have to bear in mind that Stack Overflow is potentially used by more <laughs> learners and younger or new programmers. Uh, how often do you use Stack Overflow? I probably visit it maybe hmm, not not even every day, but uh, that's just me. JavaScript, HTML, SQL, Python. Python at forty eight percent. This is interesting though. Developers report using sorry people learning to code are more likely than professional developers to report using Python, C plus plus, and C. Compared to professional developers, those learning to code are less likely to report using SQL, TypeScript, and Bash slash Shell. So it's interesting that um, learners are less likely to report using SQL when it's actually, let's say, half of the half of the respondents included it. So fifty two profession fifty two percent of professionals reported using SQL. Oh, and only 37% of amateurs. <laughs> HTML up there with those learning to code. That's fairly expect. That's you would expect that. So yeah, maybe brush up on SQL. That that moves you into the uh, professional league. Um. Yeah, Stack Overflow survey. If you've not come across it before, it's full of <laughs> survey data.
most popular technologies, most loved, dreaded, and wanted. Let's just, I'll come back to the jobs in a second. Let's just, while we're here, loved versus dreaded. Oh, wow, everyone loves Rust at the moment. Python, 67%. So two thirds of people love Python, 32% dread it. So it's quite up there. It's, it's up there with the loved language. Some of the niche ones are obviously will always be more loved because if you're going to use a niche a closure or elixir, then you're probably going to be raving about it. Um, C sharp is not quite as high up as I might have guessed. Um, is this QL in here? Oh, it is, yeah. 64%. Yeah, so in the 60s, you've got Python, SQL, C Sharp, HTML, JavaScript. Yeah. Want. Let's see what the most. Okay. You have to bear in mind what percentage of. 71,000 responses, percent of developers who are not developing with the language or technology, but we have expressed interest in developing with it. Okay. So developers who are not developing with it, but expressed an, in, expressed an interest, 17% by them. And only 4% interested in C. <laughs> and... Only 0.23% interested in using Delphi, which is a shame because I liked Delphi. Um, back to the jobs. Okay, we've 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 dismissed this one because uh, they're asking for lots of things, and it's a bit. Uh, it's a bit off the beaten track. If you haven't got a computer science degree. Uh, senior developer, senior developer, senior, 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 full stack, integration engineer, MuleSoft slash Boomi. Don't even know what Boomi is. Perhaps we should find out. Um, IPA. A platform as a service. What's the I? I don't know. <sighs> Boomi, MuleSoft, Tibco, Talend. I'm going to dismiss this straight away because you are tying yourself into a vendor which probably could get bought out, taken over, whatever. Don't tie yourself into a vendor. That's my opinionated opinion. Data engineer. 65 to 75,000 pounds street in Somerset. No, this is another one of my bug bears. Unless it actually is. <laughs> I'm going to say this might be Clarks who make shoes. They're famously from street in Somerset. If they're not, one of the things you find on some of these sites is you'll see a job advertised and it'll be appearing as if it's in a village. <laughs> and you think, well, there's no company in that village. In the location of where the job is appearing as being is actually the location of where the recruiter lives. <sighs> anyway, run over. Let's um, continue with this. So, okay, Azure, SQL, Python, pipelines, data modeling management, Azure. Yeah, so lots of Azure. Probably not. For me, but you might find it interesting, so I'll keep going. 33 days holiday, that's the usual. So it's 25. <laughs> they quote the bank holidays, which is naughty, because sometimes you have an extra bank holiday if things happen. Uh, be one of the first 10 applicants. When was this posted? That was new, okay. Back to search results. I know it's difficult to watch when I'm scrolling, but it's the only way I can do it, I'm afraid. Um, unless I had about 100 tabs open here with all the different jobs I'd looked at already, but I think it's better just to do it on the fly, then it's a bit more spontaneous. 
Python developer, 110 to 130 thousand pounds in London. Uh, how many days in the office? Doesn't say. Oh, four days work from home. So one day a week in central London Green, FinTech. FinTech is financial technology. So green means eco, environmental. Fin is finance tech. So Python developer, fast API, AWS Docker. We are actively seeking a Python developer to join our FinTech analytics startup. You will be joining our growing team of multicultural engineers. You'll be joining a team who embrace TDD, clean code, refactoring in an agile environment. We are passionate about helping our customers exceed expectations. Our Python developers will be working closely with the CTO. That means chief technical officer. And four slash five, it's not four fifths. <laughs> Other Python developers, no apostrophe, on various data-driven and analytics-based projects for the finance sector, you will be working on a carbon accounting platform which helps finance companies track their carbon footprint. Yeah. Running on AWS, which is using lots of servers, which <laughs> are using electric. <laughs> I don't know. Are AWS green? Are they eco? I don't know. And answers down below if if I'm being harsh on AWS. Exposure to data pipelines, machine learning models, trading and risk systems. So, um, yeah, fill your boots with some NumPy in uh, linear regression, logistic regression, flexible working from home, rewarding career with a discretionary performance-based bonus. Discretionary means... <laughs> There's no obligation for your employer to give you the bonus. No, that's that's been me being cynical. Don't don't become cynical like me. Um, da data design manager. Glasgow. Seeing quite a few jobs in the UK being advertised with from Glasgow at the moment. I think. I think the UK government might be funding something up in Glasgow at the moment. Or, or or Scotland are actually trying to do their own thing, which I don't have issues with, as if it's as if what I think matters anyway. But thirty-eight point five days annual leave for all colleagues. Okay, I, I need to stop looking at the benefits and actually look at what they want. Hands-on SAS, SQL, Python. So I think today's theme is Python and SQL. That's if you want to work from home developer job. If you don't, then we might be going off on a tangent. Data engineer, data engineer. So this is page two. It feels like we've seen these already. Uh, web PHP, HTML, JavaScript. Nothing against PHP, but it does seem to be slightly less popular than it once was. Python developer, six hundred to seven hundred pounds a day, London. Let's see what the tech, what the um, business is, health tech. So a lot of these highly paid jobs in London will, also, will often have tech in the name. So again, it's trying to kind of bring some analog businesses into the digital age by the look of things. So Python, MySQL, AWS, Django. Health tech experience preferred. Problem solving skills, which if you didn't have those, you shouldn't even be a developer. Hands-on role. Okay, I guess they they specify hands-on as opposed to kind of coming in as a consultant and not actually doing the work. Or not actually doing the coding or the programming, but uh, just being an advisor, maybe. Graduate, graduate, graduate. You always see these efforts online. 
look at the the price ranges the price <laughs> the salary ranges 25 30 30 to 40 35 to 50 to me that looks like the same job but they're just covering themselves with three different price salary ranges software engineer mid level hybrid or remote who are we so i think it's often interesting to look at the actual consider the business categories of the businesses advertising you get a feel for kind of the trends in the in the businesses and the most common businesses that you can kind of i think when you're studying you just study the language but you also need to bear in mind the domain i.e the, the the business sector that you are likely to want to work in who are we we want to help small businesses win that's why we're here we connect small businesses small business owners to investors to create jobs help families and power economies because we believe that people are made to do more so far our investors have lent one 13.7 billion through it to 122,000 small medium enterprise owners in just one year we unlocked us a funding circle we deliver an amazing customer experience through technology. We are focused. So, if you don't know about Funding Circle, <laughs> they get money from investors and they promise a higher return. The reason there's a higher return is because there's a risk. There's a risk because they're lending to small businesses. Some of those small businesses fail, some succeed. On average, they promise that, well, they don't promise, but the idea is that more succeed or the ones that succeed cancel out the the losses you make on the ones that fail and overall for taking a higher risk with investing your money with them you get a better return than you would do if you didn't take a risk and you just put your money in a bank at savings bank and got 0.5 percent interest or whatever disgraceful interest rate you get with your bank in the old days banks the difference between what banks would lend at and what they would pay their savers was small. Now it seems um, they charge 3%, 4% interest rate, but savers only get half a percent back. The gap is widened, which to me suggests more profits, although they would say it's because they're having to, uh, what was it? Since the great financial crisis, they've had to... Um, <laughs> they've had to basically have a rainy day fund for in case everything goes <laughs> goes I was going to say a rude word but in case everything goes bad again why should we subsidize that anyway I'm not here to talk about banks if you don't like banks which hopefully you don't then read about Austrian economics um one of the core axiomatic presuppositions of Austrian economics is praxeology. Look up praxeology, look up Austrian economics. If you read much about that, you'll probably end up looking at Bitcoin. And definitely not crypto. Crypto, there's a rude word for cryptos. It ends in coin. Something coin. I'm not even, anyway, we're here to look at jobs. So TDD, BDD, CICD, Unix, Linux, functional programming, data structures, algorithms. If you want to learn about data structures and algorithms, check out Barry Brown on YouTube. There's a very discrete structures course. And a lot of videos about that, about graphs. I used to think that graphs were kind of um, a zigzag line. But no, graphs are, yeah. There's more to graphs and graph than you may have thought. Well, there's, there was definitely more to graphs than I originally understood. Um, even sorting algorithms. There's so, there's so many different types of sorting out sorting algorithms. You just think, oh, well, the computer does the sorting for we. No, you need to learn all the different types of sort and the algorithms, and you know, actually write a sorting algorithm. Write it in C. Write it in Python. You got quick sort, merge sort, and so on and so on. Python web developer. Okay, that's probably going to be Django, I would imagine. Yeah, strong Django experience. Zoom in a bit more.
test and debug programs. Provide estimation and reporting of assigned tasks. Okay, so that's when somebody says, how long is it going to take? And then you close, you say, I'll tell you when I've done it. And then you close the door. <laughs> so, t some of the things I say are just mm, tongue in cheek. I don't take everything literally. If you, if you copy some of the things I say, you probably would get sacked, so. <laughs> I'm not here to teach bad habits or bad attitudes. I'm, I'm here to um, give my opinion on some of the jobs out there and provoke some kind of reaction or, or spark some interest. Senior, dev senior software developer, Lead and mentor team members, maintain quality processes and technical product documentation. Encourage and motivate people to achieve high standards and meet strategic objectives by actively developing team members' skills and knowledge. Participate in code review of own and other developers' code. That's all good. Um, okay. A mature, proactive, and responsible approach to work. Yeah, tick. Degree in relevant field or equivalent experience. Tick. Excellent communication skills, both written and oral. Worked with Docker, Kubernetes environments, Python programming experience. experience. Use of Git or similar version control systems. Expertise in at least one Python framework, Django Flask. An understanding of databases in SQL. Use of Python libraries such as NumPy and Pandas. You might ask, why do I need to know Pandas or, or NumPy? Um, if you go anywhere near any kind of ML, or even if you want to... So with machine learning, it's not all about actually coming up with the... <laughs> so most, see, most, if not kind of all of the... The algorithms and the modules have already been written. Um, much much work with machine learning is actually formatting the data such that you can feed it into your model. Um, so you need to kind of remove outliers. It's all about pipelines. And, and NumPy, uh, for machine learning, NumPy, you can almost neglect pandas. I suppose Pandas is great for working with dates and such like, but um, if you're familiar with kind of slicing, um, Boolean indexing, broadcasting, and so on with NumPy, there's way more you can do with NumPy than you might first think. Even if you've got an array with text, words in it, you can still use NumPy because if you're only interested in the values, you can... Um, you can do good stuff with NumPy. Anyway, I'm digressing. Let's go to... We'll do one more on this site, and then we'll look at a different site. We'll look at uh, total jobs. Entry-level coder, twenty to 40,000. I wouldn't think working permanently from home as an entry-level coder would be great, but if you have to keep messaging someone to help you on Teams or whatever, then... It just feels like harder work. Software engineer, automotive tech. Let's look at a more lowly paid. 30 to 35,000. Hybrid, remote. An amazing opportunity for an engineer who's passionate about embedded and application software. So embedded, that's proper programming. <laughs> um, automotive industry, reduce emissions. Embedded Python, embedded C, junior, friendly software, hardware, Python, graduate, junior, mid level, embedded C, application electronics, hardware integration. So, again, sometimes if you want to earn more money, you have to think about the sector that you want to work in or the, you will be working in. The automotive industry is possibly, at this level, is possibly not one of the better paying. 
buffs bar, 40 to 60,000, full stack developer, let's see if that includes Python. One day a week in the office at HQ. We are a global leader within the technology industry. You will be getting involved with the technology strategy, project planning and promotions of online slash in-person meetups. Uh, understanding of low no code solutions, e.g. MS Power Apps, experience with DevOps, consultancy experience, cycle to work scheme. I don't even know what that is. Minimum of five years in the UK. Okay, so it's full stack. Okay, so. Hmm, it's quite open ended. So, no comment. Might be good, might not be. Who knows? Tech, tech, tech. Right, let's look at totaljobs.com. Um, Python, let's. We'll do our first search and then we'll try and specify that we want work from home or remote. Uh, let's scroll down hourly. Let's go for 40,000. To be honest, if you're a developer and you've spent in a, you know, a year or two learning your trade, you want to be earning £40,000 today because bills. Has it signed me in? Was it? I was trying to sign me in. No. Okay. Django. Agile. Are there any words that you try and avoid <laughs> that, that make you scroll past? For instance, this one's a bit odd because it's, it's still mentioning Python 2.7. May well be a good reason for that. Can't dismiss it just because of that. Python, MATLAB, C Sharp, Agile, TDD. See if there's any mention of C Sharp, I tend to avoid it. Uh, if you kind of prefer open source, then you're unlikely to have embraced C Sharp, should we say? Python software developer, let's look at this one. Django, so this is another full stack. I'm just interested in what uh, what their business is. Industry leading tech company, unique at what they're doing in the gaming sector. Okay, so Python, Django. So presumably this is to build build websites <laughs> so I suspect it's not actually to build the gaming side of things it's more to mm -hmm. maybe um, maybe it's some JavaScript sort of I don't know bingo or casino games or something don't know I thought most of those were um... oh backend server okay gaming sector yeah Gaming, that's another sect, interesting sector. A few years ago, a lot of those jobs were offshore to Gibraltar, tax-free or something. Don't know, Not I don't know the full details, but yeah, gaming sector. Is that something you would like to work in or not? Med tech, let's look at this. So medical technology. So you've got FinTech, Ecotech, Med tech. Um, Hybrid, WFH, anything that says hybrid on London, well, just bear in mind how much it can cost, easily cost £150 a day to get to London and back on the train, depending on where you live. Python, Flask API, AWS. Keep watching, because I'm going to talk about Fast API, oh, Flask API, <laughs> yeah, keep, I'm um, machine learning, I'm um, Flask API. PostgreSQL. Docker, AWS, right. I think we've got the gist of today. There's more sort of sectors with tech on the end. Um, database definitely seems to be SQL. 
Um, there we go. So, as mentioned, SQL is uh, is more desired by professionals rather than um, amateurs. <laughs> Have a look on the Stack Overflow survey. Um, just yeah, just one last thing. Um, I signed up for this test-driven development with Fast API and Docker. So I've used Docker and I've used PyTest recently. And obviously you've probably seen, I've got maybe about 10 Fast API videos up there now on YouTube. So yeah, up there, up there, over there somewhere in the list. Have a look at the playlists. Um, so I signed up for this. If you see the ticks, that's what I've completed so far. Um, I won't show just because of sort of, well, kind of copyright, and I'm not going to show you all of the site because otherwise you wouldn't pay for it, and that's not fair on the creator, Michael. So I'm here to kind of just recommend this because I have actually put my money where my mouth is, and I've paid for this and I've bought it. Uh, so I just I can recommend this. It's rec well. Not only is it recommended by me, it's re recommended by Tiangolo or Sebastian Ramirez, uh, the creator of Fast API. There's a link on his site which is recommending this course. Um, and I believe 10% of the profits go to Fast API, which is good because obviously they have costs, um, servers, hosting, etc. etc. In this part, you'll learn how to develop an ACE. RESTful API with Python, Fast API, and Postgres. So, going back to what we've just been looking at, Postgres, SQL. More professional developers want SQL. Practice TDD. Again, we just saw TDD. We just saw. We didn't see a lot of Fast API, but it's it's increasing the whole time. Postgres, and again, even if the job specifies AWS, often it will still be running. So even where it says cloud, cloud still in brackets, involves lots of SQL. Containerized Fast API and Postgres inside a Docker container. You may have already seen me do that a few times, but this kind of builds upon what I already know. So uh, run unit and integration tests with code coverage. I've not covered code coverage yet, so. Check your code for any code quality issues via linter. <laughs> Linters can drive you mad, but they do check up on you. And uh... okay, I've not even started part. Looked at part two yet, but you've got monkey patching, text summarization, advanced CI workflow structure, continuous delivery, continuous integration. Yeah, so this course is $25, which uh, to me, that's a lot of money. But if it, if by doing this, and my, my plan is to do this week or two, come back to it, redo it. I want to keep doing this so that I kind of almost know it off by heart. Um, let's just look at all that. Michael, so he's co-founder of Real Python, And there's some really good reviews here. So there we go. What tools and technology are used in this course? Python, Fast API, Docker, Postgres, Tortoise, Uvicorn, Junicorn, Swagger, PyTest, Coverage.py, Flake, Black, ISOR, HTTP, IE, GitHub Actions, GitHub Packages, Heroku. Um, just one note on that. Heroku are going to stop doing their free, uh, free stuff <laughs> in November, I believe. So if you want to follow this course in its current state, get on with it because by end of November or early November, I think, I'm not sure when, Heroku are going to stop giving their free. You, you can you could follow all this and then host on Google Cloud Platform or Amazon or Azure anyway. So but obviously the specific instructions offer Heroku. What does testdriven.io offer? Since the courses mimic real-world development, support is provided via Stack Overflow. 
yeah, if you've got a question, look on Stack Overflow first. That's what I would say as well. It's dependent on kit scale up. How long does it take to complete the course? It's dependent on your current skill level. On average, it takes approximately 10 hours to complete. As I say, my, my plan is to do this and then come back a week later and maybe do it again and maybe do it a third time. Repetition is a great way to, to learn. Funding history. Wow, so you can see all the money that he's donating to Fast API. I think that's a really good thing. Fast API is amazing and the documentation's amazing and obviously they have their costs. Well, not only their time, but all of to running a server, presumably if it's in the cloud, then with the amount of visits they get, their hosting will probably be probably be costing them. So there we go. If you want to, if this is of interest, I'll put the link down below and you can um, use go to the link. And there's a couple of other courses that involve Python. So um, yeah. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back soon with some more tutorial stroke demonstrations. If I say it's a tutorial, it's kind of just me <laughs> doing some code. If it's a demonstration, it's kind of more of a project. So I know there's a syntactic difference between demo and tutorial. So uh, yeah, that's how I see it anyway. A demo is just demo of a project. Obviously a project takes longer. A tutorial.